From inventing refrigerators, to inventing Spotify, to even inventing invisible helmets, and to revolutionizing the culture around wearing big headphones in public so you don't have to talk to other humans, the Swedes really like technology. And maybe that's why I like living in Sweden too, because I also like technology. But there's a technology that's going to be coming to Sweden and to the rest of the world sooner than later. And that's going to be self-driving cars. And I'm curious how Swede, Sweden and the Swedes are going to take to it. So let's go check it out. While I haven't driven in this car and tried its self-driving, I have tried the self-driving in the other Teslas quite extensively. I want to share some of my thoughts about that. I don't really need it. But I want it for some weird, strange reason. What the heck? That's a vibe. So this car is actually not full self-driving. What's happening here is what's called enhanced autopilot, and it's like one step away from what Tesla calls full self-driving. And that's for a couple of reasons. Um, in the EU, uh, it's not allowed to have full self-driving, so that means Tesla can't ship its full self-driving software to its, to its cars here in the EU. Um, but it can ship what's called enhanced autopilot. And what that does is it drives itself on the freeway. It'll even change lanes for me. It'll navigate from the on-ramp to the freeway to the exit uh, where I need to get off. Um, kind of cool. So like, here it goes. It just made this lane change by itself. <laughs> nice. Well, what's happening right now is called enhanced autopilot. I have had extensive experience with Tesla's full self-driving, but that's been all in the US. I actually had access to the full self-driving software back when it was a closed beta, so before it was public and you had to apply to get access to it. So, admittedly, I had to learn how to trust this Tesla when I first got it. It was a little scary at first to like, okay, I don't know how this is going to react or behave. I trust myself driving. I don't necessarily trust uh, something else taking control. Okay, it's asking me to confirm this lane change. I'm going to do it. Oh, there's a car. There's a car. It's not going to do it. Oh, no. Okay. How about now? Go, go, go. And here we go. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. It's gonna navigate in between those two cars. Oh my gosh, you're gonna hit it! Oh. That and that version in that early beta, it was really cool to see it drive itself everywhere from point A to point B, even on city streets, left turns, intersections, right turns, weird scenarios with construction. It would figure it out. But that early beta was, I think, my best way to describe it: rigid. It just wasn't like intuitive. Oh, it beeped at me because I need to, it, yeah. It just like wasn't super intuitive when it was navigating the road. It would take turns like a robot instead of slowing down a little bit like what, like what humans do so that you're not just like, oh my gosh, they're taking this turn real hard. It's, it's, it's all right, so it's gonna see all these people. Yes, oh, oh man, oh, oh man, oh, oh baby. Don't hit the median. Whoa, okay. You made the median. Woo. Okay. Wow. <laughs> right off the bat, this is something to get used to. Okay, and now we're going right into a left turn in an intersection. Okay, all right. It creeps forward and it finds the window in the traffic and makes a left turn and it hopefully doesn't hit the curb. Woo. Okay, okay. So, Something that's pretty fantastic is the visualization is different now when you have the beta. You're seeing virtually everything that this car is seeing and it sees a lot. But then they, re they upgraded it, they changed the, 
the basic uh, foundation of how they were making their full self-driving software to a neural network. So it trained on hundreds of thousands of hours of video taken from these from the cell, from these cars, the Tesla cars, and it de- it kind of trained itself how to drive. And that's what they've released to the public. And I drove with that version of full self-driving a lot because it worked really well. All of a sudden, it drove like a human. It drove intuitively. It worked so well that I drove from Dallas, Texas, all the way to San Francisco, California. That's 1,700 miles or about 2,800 kilometers. I drove all of that on full self-driving. Actually, I should say it correctly. I didn't drive. I was driven 1,700 miles in a Tesla with full self-driving. It had a few hiccups here and there, and obviously you have to stay aware. You're not just taking naps or watching movies while you're dri- while it's driving you. But it was very reliable. I would definitely say it's safer than just driving that long distance by yourself. And I could see as it gets better and better, that's going to be an integral part of the driving experience. Whoa, I love those kinds. Wow. Wow, it sees the edges really well. They're not, they're less fuzzy than they were before. I used to always get any kind of like estimations where things are, but now it's pretty realistic. <laughs> All right, here's the U-turn. Let's see if it does it. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! We're allowed. Let's see if it figures it out. Oh my gosh! It's doing a U-turn. <laughs> wow! It did a U-turn. Oh, oh, now we're in two lanes. It's driving itself, driving itself in the town. This car is driving itself, and it's very weird. No hands. So, when full self-driving does come to Sweden, both with Tesla vehicles, but also other car manufacturers, that I kind of have an idea of what that would look like and what how the Swedes how would that Swedes take to that? I think that the Swedes, um, as long as it's within like the regulatory like laws are made and the rules are set so that it's safe and regulated, um, I think full self driving will be a very interesting addition to Swedish life and culture because in Sweden you already have an extensive public transport infrastructure. You almost don't need a car. In fact, you really don't need a car to get around and to live your life here. A car is more of a luxury or a convenience. So why would you want full self-driving? I don't think it would be to to replace the buses and the trains. I think it would be to extend the already extensive network of car of buses and trains and public transport. While that network is really great, it doesn't reach into some niche areas, or maybe it doesn't run all the time on weekends or at certain times of the day. But what full self-driving vehicles can do is bring the cost down so that you could have robo-taxis or whatever it would look like in certain areas and certain during time frames where it would be difficult or costly to have human drivers driving buses or trains being built and so on. So that's kind of how I see where this could go, is not replacing public transport, but enhancing it. Oh, and speaking of um, full self-driving, it missed the turn. You know, it's still learning. Really, the goal is to be able to have the inexpensive cost of public transport as a user, combined with the convenience of owning a car. And I think full self-driving would bridge that gap. And I look forward to that future. That'd be really cool.